All right, so I kind of hinted at this in the uh, last video, but I really want to clarify something so that there's no sort of confusion about the um, stage that wireframing and prototypes sort of fit into the overall cycle, right? You should realize that wireframes and prototypes are absolutely not the first sort of step to interactive design. They're not the first thing that you're going to be doing. There's actually a number of things that should have happened prior to this. So by the time you get to this stage, you've already got some information. You're not heading into wireframing something completely blindly okay so a few things that we should have done first off you should have a defined project right i know this sounds kind of stupid but you should know what you're doing are you building an entire website are you fixing the checkout the checkout process on an e-commerce site are you figuring out how to build a new landing page for a new product that will optimize sales um, what is it you're doing right you should have a defined goal for what you're trying to accomplish and if you even better to have defined um, metrics or indicators of how you know if you're successful, right? Be extremely helpful. Um, you should know who your target audience is. You should know who you're designing for. You should know what medium. Is it for the iPhone? Is it for Android? Is it for all mobile phones, tablets, desktop computers? Does it need to work on all of these? Is it for a smartwatch or for a kiosk in a library? Um, you should know the medium that you're designing for. I mean, that sounds kind of silly doesn't it um, we should also know the scope like how much are we going to be doing are we designing an entire site one small piece what is that piece what all does that include so we should have a defined scope um, we should have some user uh, research behind this and this can be as um, in-depth as like you know a year-long endeavor by a huge team of user researchers or you know it could just be based on the prior research that you have or it could be very lightweight it all depends um, the more the better it's actually kind of addicting uh, once you get to using user research but you know that's that one of the most important things you have to have is a plan for what you're doing um, if you are designing an entire website for example you should have a site map of all the content that's going into it by having a site map that's forced you to consider the structure right so this should be in place already you should have a uh, if you're doing maybe more of a mobile application like an iPhone app you should have a flow chart for how the application is going to flow and you can explore that early on and think about how the pages will connect together how the screens will like sort of interact and flow together without having to do any wireframing and so we should have a plan for how this thing is going to flow and work prior to diving into it right and finally um, we most likely need to have some sort of content inventory and so that's basically a uh, documentation or a collection of all the content that's going to be in our application or website right and so that's what we're going to be designing around if you're going to wireframe something you got to know the pieces that are going into it right and so with the app or uh, with the flowchart or sitemap um, we should have a view for all the screens or pages we're going to have with the content inventory we know what goes into those pages okay oh one more last one clear requirements so we should know what are the features it's supposed to do what is the sort of uh, what are the elements or actions users should be able to take and those sorts of things so we should have a fair amount of documentation to know what we're diving into so that when we go to wireframe we're not just going in blind i like to compare this to uh, again to the automotive industry where they prototype automobiles right they don't just blindly say hey guys let's go prototype something um, no they like form a huge plan right they do drawings ahead of time they carefully consider the audience right they imagine if they're trying to do a luxury car a family van or a pickup truck right like what are they concepting who is it for how is it going to be used um, what are the things that need to go into it, right? And these sorts of things. And so they can form a plan around those things. So wireframing uh, and prototyping are really based on these ideas. Um, it is important to realize that as we wireframe, this can lead to changes in our plan, right? We might find that certain things in our plan aren't working the way we expected, and we might have to go back and modify them. I think that's totally reasonable. This is not a one-way street that's impossible to go sort of upstream. But um, we shouldn't be wireframing and prototyping, and that shouldn't be sort of the birthplace, if you will, of those plans, right? Those should be happening already. Um, I hate to, I don't want, I, I hate being overly sales pitchy, but if this, if you haven't had my intro to UX design course, um, I highly recommend you at least check it out. It actually fills in the blanks a lot in what I'm talking about in terms of the overall picture for the entire process of a user-centered design process. 
um, prototyping and wireframing are but one small element of that. And so if you really want to understand how they fit into the overall picture, highly recommend you take that course. Um, I think it would make a lot of sense. And in fact, I designed it and created the courses such that people in theory would take that one first and then they would naturally lead into this one. Um, so food for thought if you'd like to uh, check that out. And I think with that, that's all I really have to say at this point about uh, the things you might want to have before you wireframe and prototype. So think about that as you approach your, um, your next project. What can you document prior to trying to produce those ideas?